Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with another After Effects tutorial for you to have a go at. Now, uh, as many of you will know, Diablo 3 is coming out very, very soon, so I thought I'd celebrate by producing a, uh, an After Effects tutorial showing you how you can create the Diablo 3 intro ident um, using only the standard tool set within After Effects CS3, CS4, or CS5. Now, the actual um, logo ident is a lot more sophisticated. They've used um, 3D Studio Max to create the, uh, the flame effects. There's some particle effects and there's some glow effects in there um, that you won't actually find in this. Um, but I think, uh, despite the fact that there's only um, the standard toolkit at work here, it looks pretty good. Now I'll also apologize in advance. The, uh, the tutorial sequence will probably be broken up into two, possibly even three parts, because it is quite involved, despite the fact that it's only about five seconds long. And uh, frankly, I'll need to take a break in between. So uh, apologies for that, but let's get started with part one. So let's create a new composition and uh, we'll call it main comp. I'm using the uh, ever faithful 720p preset and we'll set it to five seconds long and hit OK. What we're going to do first is uh, just create some of the background elements. So uh, first thing to do is create a new solid and we'll pick a very, very dark red. So we're looking at uh, RGB 2000 and we'll just hit OK. Our next step is to uh, Go to the effects and presets panel and find the ever faithful fractal noise and we'll just drop that onto the new solid. I'm going to change the fractal type from the default basic to dynamic twist. Twill down the transform properties and increase the scale to 400. I'll turn the contrast up to about 150 and we'll select overlay from the blending mode. Now with the timeline indicator still at the beginning of your timeline Click the stopwatch on evolution to create a keyframe. Move the uh, timeline ind indicator to the end and we'll just uh, create a full revolution. And that will create this basic swirly smoke that you can see as I scrub through the timeline here. So we'll just rename that layer smoky red BG. Next thing to do is create another new layer. This time we're going to go with full on black and we'll call this vignette. Go to the rectangle tool and click and hold to select the ellipse tool and then double click the ellipse tool to create the default elliptical mask on the vignette layer. Twill down the mask properties, change it from add to subtract, increase the feather to 100 and reduce the mask expansion to 125, negative 125. And that will just give us our uh, vignetted smoky layer. I'm going to create another smoke layer, so select new and solid. And we'll create a uh, another default black solid and we'll call it smoke layer. Just hit OK. Add the fractal noise to it again. Increase the contrast to 150. Take the brightness down to minus 20. Change the fractal type from basic to dynamic twist. Tool down the transform properties. Take it up to 200. Create a keyframe for evolution at the beginning of the timeline. Hit the end key to take your timeline indicator to the end of your composition. And just type in a number four, and that will evolve it quite rapidly. So we've got four um, revolutions in the five second timeline duration. Next thing we're going to do is with the timeline indicator still at the beginning of the timeline, create a Create a keyframe for offset turbulence. Tap the end key to take the timeline indicator to the end. And we're just going to hold down shift and drag the Y axis value down to about minus 640. 
Now when I scrub through the timeline, you see we've got some fairly rapidly evolving rising smoke. Seem to have hit something slightly weird there, so uh, you know, obviously uncheck the uniform scaling button, so uh, make sure you didn't do that. Um, uniform scaling should be on and the scale value should be 200. And that's a little bit more like what we're after. Now we're going to leave the blending mode in the effect at normal, but in the uh, main composition, I'm going to right click, select blending mode and overlay. And that just gives us a little bit more depth to our smoky effect in the background. Okay, next step is to create the um, kind of ornate object in the background. So you'll need a, a vector for this. Now I've uh, put the link for this vector um, in the uh, description of the YouTube video, so you should already see it. And it's called heartcrest.ai. So I'm just going to import that and bring it in. I'll right click and create another new composition. We'll call this ornate object. Just hit OK. And we'll bring the AI into it. I'll just hit Control K to bring up the uh, composition settings again. And we'll just change the uh, background color to a mid gray so we can see it a little bit better. Now, obviously, this is a little bit more romantic and not particularly hellish. So, uh, what we're going to do is just hit Control, Shift, and N for new to create a new mask, and then Control T to bring up the transform properties for it. And we're just going to crop the top edge by grabbing the handle and dragging it down to about that point there. And that just crops it nicely. Now with the uh, AI file selected, hit Control and D to duplicate it. Tap R for rotation and just rotate it by 180 degrees. And that's actually pretty close to how we, uh, how we want it, but I'll just uh, nudge the top one up and the bottom one down. And there you have it, we've got a nice uh, ornate background. When we go back to the main comp and bring in our ornate object and drop it on the top of the stack, you won't be able to see it very clearly, but it's definitely there. The first thing we're going to do with it is go to Layer Styles and Bevel and Emboss. And instantly, with the default settings, you get pretty much the effect that we're after. Just to tweak it a little bit, I'm going to go to the Effects and Presets panel and find the Tritone effect and we'll add that. I'm going to set the shadow value to a slightly silverish color. So we're looking at 74, 65, 55 for RGB on that. Now we want to actually carve a block through the middle, so uh, with the ornate object pre-comp selected, hit Control, Shift and N to create a new mask, Control T to bring up the transform properties, and just drag the uh, top and bottom handles in, tap M to bring up the mask, and just set it from add to subtract. And that'll just crop the, uh, the middle out and give us a place for our text to live. Okay, so uh, next step is to uh, create the text. So go to your text tool, set it to center text in the paragraph settings, now the typeface is called Blade 2. It's very, very close to the Diablo 3 uh, typeface. And again, the link for the download is uh, available both in the uh, description for this video, and also it'll be on the uh, tutorial page on my website at shortformvideo.com. So Blade 2 is selected. We we'll set it to uh, 120 pixels high. And we'll type in Diablo in all caps. Now the color I've selected here is 234-222-186. So we'll just uh, hit Control and Home to make sure it's centered horizontally and tap A to bring up the anchor point and we'll just adjust the anchor point so it's in the middle of the text. Now the first thing I want to do with this is select the, uh, the, the D and take that up to 200 pixels. And we'll do the same with the O. And obviously that doesn't look quite right. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just adjust the uh, baseline shift to about minus 14. And 
we'll do the same thing with the O. I'll just uh, set it to optical. And maybe we'll just uh, increase the scale a bit. But we'll take the scale up to 175. Okay, so we need to make this uh, look a little bit more interesting. First thing I'm going to do is select layer styles and again, bevel and emboss. In the bevel and emboss settings, I'm going to change it from smooth to chisel hard. And that'll do for that. You can right click, go to layer styles and select outer glow. Twill down the outer glow properties. I'm going to set a nice strong orange for that and increase the size from 5 to about 15. I'm also going to go to layer styles and select gradient overlay. Twill that down and just flick on reverse. So we get light to dark from top to bottom. And in the blend mode, select overlay. Now you can tweak the um, offset if you want the uh, darker element to, to work its way up a little bit further. So I'm going to set it to minus 12 in this case, just to bring up the, uh, the darker part. And again, I'm going to grab the fractal noise effect. I'm going to drag that and drop it on top of our text. In the scale value for the fractal noise, I'm going to take it down to 10 to make it really patchy and change it from uh, none to color burn in the blending mode. Now, uh, I'm thinking that the uh, existing color is not quite right, so with the uh, type selected, which is going to change the, uh, the text color. So we're looking at uh, 243-187-132. Okay, so um, by my reckoning, I've been chatting for quite a while now. So I'm going to leave it at that um, so I can set up the next stage of the tutorial because I'm a little bit unsure as to where I'm going to go next. Um, hopefully you found this useful. Once the tutorial is complete, the uh, project file will be available for free download from a website at shortformvideo.com. But uh, for now, I'll finish up there. And I'll see you back in part two. Thanks for watching.